All right, so I'm doing something a little different in this video. I talked about this in the announcement. I said I was just gonna do like a, just a few videos, like and literally just like whenever I want. It would just be videos on topics and it would just be me talking. And like, so treat this video as like a podcast, just throw it on in the background. Nothing a note is gonna be on screen, so don't worry about that. The topic of today's video though, is um, gonna be remasters and remakes of albums because I, I kind of find this to be pretty interesting. Um, if you saw the thumbnail, you probably know the crucial ones I'll be talking about, but to get it out of the way, the general remaster, I'm, well, from what I'm aware at least, like basically old albums, like let's say Paranoid, were made for vinyl. So if it's like remastered on like Spotify or something, it's basically made to sound good digitally opposed to like being, because it was made for vinyl. So then they're just basically remaking it for digital audio, you know? That's basically what I'd call um, the general remaster. But I brought in like an example of a remaster that doesn't really just change it for like for that reason specifically and kind of does a little more with it, you know? Um, that example would be The Great Annihilator by Swans. See, when I was going through Swans discography, they had two versions of it and basically the old version sounds kind of reverby. It kind of sounds a little hollow at times, I'd argue. But like with the remaster or yeah, remake or whatever, the remaster that they did, they basically remove the reverb and honestly make it sound less dated um, because of that. I feel like the best thing I could compare that change to is like a quality of life change in a video game. It just sounds better. It just like, it sounds more in your face. I'd argue it's a little louder. And it, it's like I said, it's literally just a quality of life change in a video game. It's helpful, but it's like not too crazy, you know? So that's a good remaster, you know? It's, it's not a big change, no big changes, but it's... It's a few small ones that tend to make the album sound better, you know? Now we're gonna get into the more like remake, remaster type bag, you know? And I I went to this album mainly just because I know some of the hits off of it. And that album would be 1989 by Taylor Swift. Now I'm not a fan of Taylor by any means. I'd honestly say I don't like her music, but that's not really relevant to the conversation here. Um, I listened to some of the hits off of both versions because I was like, you know, I recognize these songs, so why don't I listen to the re recordings? And to be honest with you, I think the originals sound way better. I think the remakes of, of the 1989 songs just sound kind of forced. Some of her vocals don't sound as great. They sound kind of put down in the mix, you know? And they kind of sound, they just sound a little weirder, you know? Especially the like kind of weird verse on Shake It Off. That completely threw me off and it was kind of funny, honestly. I definitely do think that the remakes kind of mess up the original and kind of just, as I said, make it sound a little forced, make it sound a little weird. And it kind of just feels like it's just there to exist, you know? It doesn't really improve on the original. doesn't really breathe any new life into it. It's just a pretty mid remake. Okay, so let, let's just, let's stop beating around the bush, man. Let's just get to the heavy hitter one. Uh, that being Twin Fantasy. I talked about this in my car seat headrest video. If you haven't seen it, I'm not gonna, well, I'll spoil it still, but you know, let's, let's talk about it. So Twin Fantasy Mirror to Mirror is the original. It was recorded in 2010 and you know, there's a lot of people that like it more than the remaster. Um, a lot of people argue, a lot of Mirror to Mirror fans argue that Face to Face sucks all the life out of it and just really like removes all the emotion from it and just kind of makes it a soulless thing. Um, hard disagree. But then you have the Face to Face fans that are like, oh my God, Mirror to Mirror sounds just awful. It sounds straight like straight garbage. And then you, then you have me. I love both of these albums. I think they're both tens and I think they're both like the best car seat headrest albums. And to be honest with you, I could see the argument of like, oh, face to face, it's a commercial remake. Oh, it removes all the life from it. But personally, I feel like that's coming from an emotional attachment to the album. And that's where I bring in another example, um, that being the Ghost Pop tape. In like fall of last year, uh, Peggy released a remake or a remaster of one of his classic albums, the Ghost Pop tape. And at the time, this was like my favorite album ever. As of right now, it's really grown off me. I honestly don't like it anymore. That's a whole personal issue though. Um, but with this album, he basically remakes all the instruments. And I remember just hearing it for the first time. I was really disappointed. Um, not in the all my heroes are cornballs way though. It was really um, strange hearing this, like maybe some songs had like key changes. His vocals were way further up in the mix. There was like zero reverb on it. From what it sounded like to me, it sounds like he basically removed all the challenging aspects of the album. He basically kind of, like like with um, Face to Face for Twin Fantasy, it feels like he kind of sucked the life out of it, sucked the raw emotion out of it. And 
honestly, I've seen people that say like, oh, I like the remaster version actually. And I'm like, seriously? And then that's when I realized, oh, it's like, cause I kind of, I kind of spent a whole year just listening to the ghost pop tape and growing so accustomed to it, um, growing a kind of attachment to it and kind of just having emotion, having like a lot of emotions connected to it. And it's kind of led me to think now, you know, like, well, maybe the remaster isn't even bad. It's just the emotional attachment that I've grown to have with the other, with the original. That's kind of made me have a, a kind of distaste for for the remaster. And I honestly feel like that's how the Car Seat Headrest fans are acting. Um, kind of just like they've grown attached to a certain version of it. I feel like on both sides, they've grown attached to a certain version of the album and kind of defend this one and then hate on the other, you know? And to be honest with you, as I said, I love both of them equally. But I, ju I just feel like that might be a valid perspective on the whole issue of like, oh, which one's better? Um, I think it's just, you know, you prefer which one you want. I mean, you just have like certain preferences, you know, man? And honestly, that's the video, man. I, I didn't really think this would be too long. I didn't think it'd be too short, though. Um, I, I kind of I just want to start expanding the channel. I'm getting kind of tired of editing tier list videos. Um, I get really bored. I'm like, dude, this sucks. I hate this. So I'm just, I want to try doing other things, you know, kind of just talking about certain albums. Maybe I'm not even going to like being do like, I have an idea where I start like just talking about albums that I understand now. Like I have a video that I want to do on like communist slow jams or like cavalcade by black Mini, where like, cause I feel like I understand those albums now and I kind of just wanted to talk about them, you know? So thanks for listening to me talk and basically just rant about twin fantasy. Um, yeah, I'm glad you made it this far in the video, man. This is a short one, and this is the first episode of Just Me Talking. That's what it's going to be called. And, uh, yeah, thanks for listening, man. Bye.